So, hey everyone, Tim Higgins. I'm going to talk just a second on Javelin um, and the process that I just created um, working on for a week or so. So, there's two actions here. And what I want to do is kind of demonstrate the Javelin. <clears throat> and I also want to um, show you how, to, how it works just so you can help maintain it, manage it, and change it. So, there's two processes. One is it goes... Well, let's call them workflows. Okay, so there's two workflows. So the first workflow will go to an Oracle database. Um, it will look in a, a table and get an ID that isn't used. Okay, now all I did was I created a simple uh, database in Java, I mean Oracle, I'm sorry. And what it does is it has an ID column, and the ID column has like one through 10 uh, values. That's all it is. So it will go and it will get some unused IDs and it will save them to a staging table. Okay, so the staging table is here. Now keep in mind, this can be named anything. This can be changed any way we want to. This is just an example, right? So here's where I've got before. Now if we go and look to that javelin, which is this one. Nope, this one. Okay, so what it's going to do, it's going to check to see if you took in a flag. One of the best things about Javelin, or one of the most powerful things about Javelin, however you want to say it, is the actual um, variables. Okay, so you want to get used to using variables. Now, I don't care if you see this, even though I have my password and stuff here. That's not important because this is my local stuff. If you hack into it, you've probably gotten to my laptop, and there's more interesting stuff than that. Okay, but the point is, I'm pulling from an Oracle database, which is my O's, and I'm pushing to a SQL database, which is S's. The only reason I did that was to show you the benefit that it doesn't have to be, you know, it's database. It's not dat database dependent, okay? So you can go as, any way you want to. So in each one of these little tabs are clickable. So if I start from here, I've asked, do you want to clear the stage? Well, if you notice, if I click on it and I look over here, these are actually properties that are set up. So right here, clear stage. If it equals true, then continue. Well, if you go down here, here's clear stage, it's a Boolean, I have it set to false because I don't want you to clear the table. Um, truth is I don't care, but that's a variable you can pass in. So you can set this to pass in variables, okay, which is all these. Now, what we'll do is we'll, and this is pretty common sense, right? Now, you could hard code this stuff like I did here with this query, or you can put it down here so you can use it throughout the system, okay? That's really however you want to do it. But what it's going to do if it says no, it goes into a loop. The first thing it does in loop is I say save loop count. So what is loop count? Well, let's go look. Save loop count is how many of these records do you want to generate, okay? So if I want to do 1,000, if I want to do 10,000, right? This will create it. So I want to stick with just a basic of maybe 25. I can do 10, I can do 15, whatever. Um, <clears throat> now I say if the loop is greater than zero, execute the body, okay? So here we see this is another flow. Okay, so if I go and look here, this is just another uh, flowchart. That's all this is, okay, which is what it's at your parent level. But the first thing we we'll do is get user ID. So if I click into this one, if you notice the cute little icon, this is another flowchart as well. But what makes the difference with flowchart flow is it has to have a start function, okay? So this is going to say start. It's going to go to Oracle. Inside of Oracle, now here I did something a little bit different. If you do the password, okay, which best practice is not to have it like this so people can see it, is to actually click on it and say, uh, type it in here. Now, if I say use variable, I can click on this. And for an example, if I say use variable, now I can say, um, what is my variable? Oh, password. Okay, oops. All right, and that's it. Okay, so now it's using the variable password, which is down here. Now, with saying that, notice my query is also down here as well. Now. To read the query, it makes it more easier, or easier, however you want to say that, by just clicking on this. Um, now, I'm sorry, since I have it down here, we have to click it on this. But as you notice, you really can't read it there, and this is kind of hard to read too. So what I normally do is just copy and paste this to a notepad. That way I can work on it. But if you look, this, again, is kind of hard-coded, um, which I need to change, but I'm saying... Pick a random number, one through um, 9,999. I probably should change it and pass in a variable. So I'll probably work on that. And also I'm hard coding the column and table that I want to look at. Okay, but this is pretty simple. And this this runs perfectly fine. This is going to look in this 
you know, look into this table and it's going to say, give me an ID that does not exist. Okay. So let's go ahead and close that. Now for each one of those, once that is gathered up, we'll sync through it. So what I need to do is save my ID to a variable so I can use it. Now notice this is a for each. Okay. This is a data table. So therefore I have to use a select. If you go back and look, now to go back, you use breadcrumbs. So if I have to go back and look, my output here is this variable right here, out data table. Okay. Um, so if I go down here and look, out data table is what? It's a data table. Okay. So that means whatever my select statement is here, it's going to write it out to this data table. So then I'm going to pass this data table to this for each loop, and I'm going to loop through each of the fields.